What are some of the biggest changes you're seeing right now and how companies use technology today? How are the pressures changing? So, you know, to talk about today, I want to first start from the past. Uh, when we founded the company 10 years ago, Mark Andreessen had just coined the term software is eating the world. And when I think back to that term, it meant that software was going to pervade the value chain of every industry. No company is immune. And we're not just talking about super, superficial add-ons like, hey, here's a better way to market to customers or a better way to build websites. Um, you know, that's too on the nose. What we really meant was software is going to go deep into the value chain from how we think about supply chains and manufacturing and distribution all the way to how we think about orienting around the customer and how we you know, market to them, how we distribute to them. And every single part of every company needs to be disrupted by software. Um, and I, I really think this marks this kind of shift from you know, a, a world that was still carrying a lot of the legacy of the industrial revolution where it was about what you could produce to now you know, it, the information world truly and you know, how teams and companies can act in unison and coordinate around information to act better. Um, and, and ultimately, you know, today, uh, especially accelerated by the pandemic and hybrid work and every company trying to figure out, you know, how to coordinate, especially when their, their global workforce is increasingly scattered, you know, between different locations, work, you know, uh, workplaces, uh, home, I think it's, it's even more urgent than, than ever. And so, you know, what we're seeing today is really this enormous appetite and recognition that, you know, the way that we work needs to be completely rethought over the next five years. Uh, the past 10 years uh, was kind of the, the slow setup, and now it's time to, to really make that big leap. I want to hear more about your view of technology, especially when you think about businesses are looking for technology to solve their problems. But a lot of times technology actually exacerbates the problems they're having. I think that's a really good call out. You know, I'm uh, weirdly enough, I'm, I'm not uh, necessarily a complete technophile. I don't believe tech is always the solution to every problem. And in fact, as you pointed out, I think within enterprises, especially, there's so many different fragmented pieces of tech that are solving individual problems that so maybe sound good in isolation. But when you add it all up, you have this little point solution for this part of the company. You have a piece of data that's stuck over in this other system. You have this thing that's that's meant for a very specific problem, and people have to learn it just to solve that problem. And then it doesn't apply to other problems. You you get all of this fragmentation. And when you look in aggregate, you know every enterprise today uses hundreds, if not thousands, of di disparate pieces of software that all don't talk to each other. And so it's actually in aggregate compounding the problem of you know, these teams being scattered across multiple tools, disconnected data, and ultimately creating more silos, not fewer within these large enterprises. And again, in, in a world where we're physically often disconnected, in addition to just being you know, uh, metaphorically disconnected in terms of data, I think it only gets worse. And so what's really needed now is a way to unify across those teams to connect data, but not to go back to the old way of being very top down and centralized with everything, instead to combine the best of both worlds. We do want teams to have the best of breed implementation of how they work, to be able to manage that and have autonomy, but then also it needs to all be connected back together. So what's the future of connected enterprise look like then? So we really see this, this opportunity to bridge that gap, to do both, to enable teams. And this is, you know, this was where we started as a company 10 years ago. Our whole vision was to democratize software creation, to enable any team to build really powerful and useful applications themselves without having to rely on a programmer or an expensive implementation budget. You know, every team in every enterprise should be able to go and build an app, whether it's to manage a you know, set of marketing campaigns or to manage the product development process. Every team should go and build it using the localized context that they have. Yet at the same time, they all need to connect back together. And that's where we've really started pushing as a company. And we just announced our, our next 10 years vision for Airtable is really about not just enabling, enabling individual apps to be created, but to connect all those apps together into an entire ecosystem where you have shared sources of truth, these you know, really valuable data sets that are um, canonized across the entire enterprise. And yet every team can then build their own workflows in a really fast and flexible way on top of that. So are there any companies that are doing this right now that you see that you want to shout out? 
So one one customer that uh, is very near and dear to my heart because I've spent many many hours, uh, probably uh, you know countless hours uh, on their platform, especially over the pandemic, is Netflix. Um, so of course we've all watched great Netflix shows, and if you think about all of the scale and complexity that goes into their business, I mean they're producing so much content on this global scale, and every single piece of content, whether it's a you know a new film or a new episode you know, has all of these different pieces of metadata. You know, you can imagine like from the casting and locations and budgets, but all the way to post-production and how they're going to release and market um, these different, uh, you know, pieces of content. You know, it's a very complex process and it would become very easy by default to allow all of those different steps to become scattered, to not all tie back together. And so Netflix was able to use Airtable to build this really rich data set um, where every title is a single point of origin and every component of those new pieces of content are tracked in one place. Um, and that actually enables each team at the edges of the company, the marketing team, the post-production team, the casting team, to each have their own apps and workflows that connect back to that shared data. And so you're really combining the agility and, and, and autonomy which is a huge part of Netflix's um, culture uh, to, you know, to go and move quickly. Yet at the same time, you don't have all these scattered sources of truth. It all connects back and you can get this master bird's eye view of what's going on. So let's give the audience some takeaways here. We talked about quite a few things. And one thing you mentioned a few minutes ago was silos. So how do leaders empower their team? How do they start thinking about getting rid of those silos and working in a more effective and efficient way. For sure. I mean, here, I think uh, I love this concept of the Jim Collins principle of, you know, and uh, the power of and right um, in, in the sense that traditionally it was thought of as a trade off. You either have to be centralized and have that uh, single source of truth or you can choose to empower teams right at the edges of the company and enable innovation and agility. You can't have both. Well, my belief is that to achieve the best outcomes, you have to have both. And we've seen this with our customers. I mean, Equinox, for instance, uh, during the pandemic, of course, when all gyms were shut down, they made this huge push to accelerate their efforts to produce content, um, digital content for their Equinox Plus efforts. And they were able to do this through Airtable and have both that, both that centralized source of truth, but also enable the teams actually producing the content to move really, really quickly. And the net result is incredible business outcomes. This is not just, you know, a nice to have. It's not about convenience. Um, you know, it's not just about like a prettier, or better way of collaborating. It's actually fundamentally about driving the most important business outcomes and allowing companies to kind of turn on a dime to, in a coordinated fashion, execute quickly against market changes. You think about companies like Sears and Blockbuster, um, Kodak, these companies that were really great titans of their day and maybe even saw where the world was going and where they needed to go, but just ultimately weren't able to make that pivot and execute quickly enough to, to keep uh, following the cheats. And so I think today it's really about refusing to trade off between either you get you know centralized um, decision-making and shared sources of data or you get autonomy, it has to be both. And I think um, as, a, as a company, Airtable is completely dedicated to empowering both sides of that in a connected way. Howie, how many companies do you think are actually thinking this way right now? So I think you're you're seeing the the top companies in every industry, you know, the disruptors, um, you know, in the content world. Of course, Netflix has has done a lot to you know transform the industry around them. But also companies that have been around for a while in the media world are seeing the importance of doing this and transforming themselves. We actually work with a lot of you know great companies in that industry, both the new disruptors as well as the existing incumbents. Um, and so I think we're we're seeing, especially in industries where there's a high rate of change, there's a you know there's a market landscape that's evolving in this necessitating this change, we're seeing a high rate of appetite or a high rate of transformation there. Um, you know, retail and fashion is another example. Um, you know, and, and I think that in five years from now, any company that's not on this bandwagon is going to be increasingly at risk of becoming obsolete. You know, if you look at the Fortune 500 and who's in that list and who gets, you know, kind of pushed out of it, um, I am firmly confident. I would take the over bet that, you know, the majority of companies in that list five years from now have make have made this leap and transformed themselves um, or they will have been pushed off of the list.